welcome to the classic game room review of GORF. It sounds like a silly name, but it's not. GORF stands for Galactic Orbiting Robot Force. And I'm glad that they have an acronym for that, GORF, because if you're fighting the Galactic Orbiting Robot Force, Galactic Orbiting Robot Force, that has nine syllables. You can't just shout that out in the middle of combat. It's much faster, easier, and more efficient to just say GORF. Then everyone knows what you're talking about. Ah, oh, the Galactic Orbiting Robot Force. Yeah, they're back again. Well, let's go uh, shoot them in four different modes of gameplay here on the ColecoVision. Sadly, I never owned a ColecoVision in my youth. I was strictly an Atari 2600 guy. Well, by guy, I mean like eight years old. Without the disposable income to run out and buy a ColecoVision. It was not until recently while producing Classic Game Room that I was finally able to acquire a ColecoVision, and wow, it's amazing. The ColecoVision was released to the United States market in 1982. Gorf came out in the arcades in 1981. And amazingly, I never actually played the game in the arcades. I'd always heard about Gorf. And I'll, I'll be honest, this is one of the best video games I've ever played. And just look at it on screen. First of all, it's four games in one, and the ColecoVision handles this marvelously. The graphics, the sound effects, and the gameplay are terrifically smooth, and from what I've seen, you'll find that in a lot of ColecoVision games. It's a much more powerful game system than the Atari 2600. The first stage, as you see on screen now, looks a lot like Space Invaders, the back-and-forth descending galactic orbiting robot force GORF army. One of the big differences between this level and Space Invaders is that you can move your spaceship up closer to the aliens, you can also shoot rapidly. If you, want to if you want to hit that spaceship at the top of the screen, then you have to let your shots go all the way to the uh, top of the screen. A terrific element of strategy there, and something I haven't seen in uh, very many old school games. In the arcade version, I understand they had five different levels of gameplay, but here in the ColecoVision you get four. They're all different, they're all exciting, and they all hail back to that golden age of arcade goodness, the early 1980s. Then you get to the Space Warp, which looks fantastic for a game of this age. It's a lot of fun to play as well. You keep shooting in the middle of the Space Warp and picking off the spaceships as they're coming out of the Space Warp at you. Finally, you get to the flagship, which is like blowing up the Battlestar Galactica with an X-Wing fighter. Always a nice feeling. After you complete each level, each round of four different missions, you are then promoted. I'm now a space colonel. You start over at Astro Battle once again, and the gameplay increases in speed. It gets very challenging. This game is terrifically addictive, a lot of fun, very well made, very well produced on the ColecoVision. And as I said earlier, this is one of the best games I've ever played. It has every element that makes an old school 1980s arcade game fun. I like the music, I like the sound effects, I like shooting the flagship. If you're watching Classic Game Room and you've never played Gore for if it's been 10 or 20 years since you've played it, Go out and find this game. It's available on ColecoVision, as you see here. Uh, Atari 2600 and 5200, I believe, although I've never actually played those versions, so I'm going to have to uh, have to hunt that down. A lot of fun to try to beat your high score. You can pick it up every now and then. The games are short and compact. And it's just perfect. This is a perfect video game. 
And keep watching Classic Game Room as we break out numerous other ColecoVision games. It's an impressive game console. There's only a few game consoles we're missing here on Classic Game Room now. We don't have an Intellivision as of yet. An Atari 5200, Atari Jaguar. A couple people have asked for ZX Spectrum reviews, which I don't even think they released that in the United States, so I don't have one of those yet. You know, the Bally Astrocade, missing that one. Well, assuming the show goes on forever, we'll probably acquire all of these someday. So keep watching, tell your friends, make them watch it. And if they don't, drag them kicking and screaming over to your place and force them to play Gorf until they understand. After the flagship, there's that red thing in the middle. That's what you want to hit with your shot. And it gets more challenging as you progress through the game, obviously. The flagship starts shooting at you. It drops enemies down at you. If you hit to the right or left of it, you hit other parts of the spaceship. And that gives you some points as well. So if you're going for maximum points, perhaps you just want to uh, slowly torture the flagship by destroying it bit by bit. Or just put the thing out of its misery with one shot. I'm now promoted to Space General, a rank I will proudly display by wearing it on a name tag, and I'll write Space General in crayon. Speaking of crayons, if you write GORF backwards, you spell frog. Just in case you were wondering. That works with markers also. Don't forget that for the price of one brand new video game, you can buy an entire ColecoVision, controllers, probably a couple games, including Gorf. And if you like Atari and you know the Magnavox Odyssey 2 and those really old school game systems, you'll love this thing. <laughs>